How's it going? Yeah, this is a little strange, isn't it? Uh, I just dug this out of my closet. This has been in my closet for almost 10 years now. This is a uh, Nintendo DS. This is freaking sweet. I'm just going to show it off. Look at this. Look at, look at that Nintendo DS. This is a silk, this is a silk Nintendo DS jersey. How many households do you know that have this just in their closet? Um, this is a series that I thought would be interesting to share with people. It's about working at a video game store. I kind of didn't want to mention uh, the specific name of the store, but I think I'm going to show some pictures of back then. So might as well say I used to work at a GameStop and it was a long time ago. It was during a very huge generation of games. It was more along the lines of PlayStation 2, Xbox, and uh, the GameCube era of games. And then the old like Dreamcast and PlayStation 1 and uh, Game Boy Advance were just leaving. The DS was hitting the marketplace and so was the PSP when I was working there. So it's kind of a long story, so I want to break it up into parts. And uh, yeah, I figured I might as well wear the garb of the old job and this is this is my old name tag here you can see that's a picture of me from high school and then there's like my there's my four favorite pokemon <laughs> uh it says cabin because my nickname was cabin boy uh like the chris elliott film um and on the back of it it says blow jobs are accepted as a form of payment I don't know. Maybe I thought that was funny in high school. Uh, so this is my story of working for GameStop for about two years. Um, so I guess we'll start off today's episode with how I got the job. So um, I had got hired around the time Funko Land, which was GameStop before GameStop. Funko Land had stopped and then GameStop took over. And then GameStop was absorbing Babbage's, Sam Goody, and some other, I, I think it was EB Games, they were starting to absorb them. I know some EB Games still exist, but anyway, uh, GameStop was then kind of becoming the monopoly for uh, modern game stores. And uh, I had worked in a restaurant when I was uh, around 15, and you know, it it is what most restaurant or fast food jobs are like it was miserable and uh at that particular job i didn't have the greatest manager in fact uh he was uh he was arrested in one of those undercover uh pedophile stings as in uh some some uh fake girl was chatting him up on uh, aol instant messenger or something and uh, he designated a meetup, and then, well, Chris Hansen showed up with some cookies. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the story. All I know is uh, I wanted to get out of that job. And uh, at the time, I was acting a bunch in uh, theater. Yeah, could you tell? In high school. And uh, just with my shows and everything, the, that job that I was working wasn't very flexible. So um, I did leave that job. And I remember my mom wasn't too happy. She was just like, you know, you don't just quit a job without having another job lined out. And I was like, it's okay. I, I put in an application at GameStop <laughs> thinking that I was going to get some job. Well, I remember when I actually applied at GameStop, I had just had some sort of just overall bad day, you know, when you're a teenager and just things aren't going your way and you misunderstand the world or you place too much value on girls or other things of that nature and I remember I was just so bummed out and uh, I lived kind of close to a GameStop back then and I walked to it and I I usually just asked my mom like mom could you give me a ride to the GameStop and uh, I ended up uh, walking into a, a GameStop and just looking around at stuff and uh, um the guy who was working there, his name was Jeff at the time, and he was a really cool dude. Like, he always uh, used to talk about all sorts of, like, RPGs and uh, games that I favored back in the day. 
and we just got to talking and uh, one thing led to another. I was like, yeah, I you know, quit my job and I kind of regret it because I've been trying to find something. He's like, hey, you know what? Put in an application. You can put me down as a reference. Uh, so I did that. And about a week later, I get a call from the GameStop. The manager at the time was like, hey, uh, I saw that Jeff put you down as a reference and I trust his opinion. Uh, would you come in for an interview? And uh, I go to the interview <laughs> and I was like sweating bullets because I did not want to fuck this up because I thought this is it. This is this is a supreme job for a gamer like me. Uh, what, what do you do at a GameStop? You play games all day, right? That's, and then you get to you get first dibs on games. That's that's what it's got to be about. I'm so ignorant at the time, <laughs> but we'll we'll get to those stories soon. Anyway, so I'm at the interview and uh, I'm I've got a collared shirt. Definitely not this shirt. Um, I've got khakis on and I'm you know telling the manager about all my obsession with games. Like this is. You honestly think that when you start at a video game store, you apply for a video game store, that your knowledge on video games would be highly valued? It's not really. It doesn't come into play. It's how well you can sell something. So I had zero experience in retail. I had never worked a retail job before, uh, but I did know my shit when it came to video games because I had been following them my entire life. Uh, so when it came to value of games, I could kind of talk about that because there was like a couple of questions like, what do you think this is worth? You know, so on and so forth. Like, what do you think, uh, you know, a PlayStation coming in was worth in 2005, you know, <laughs> or what's the difference between a PlayStation and a PlayStation 2, you know, uh, but what, what features does a PlayStation 2 have? Well, you know, it had a DVD player, so it's an easy sale that way. Anyway, um, and the manager at the time, I went through several managers when I worked at GameStop, but uh, this particular manager was my favorite. He was a really chill guy. He also uh, was in a band too, and I really enjoyed his music. Uh, in an, uh, not, I, not ironically, I honestly liked his music. He was a nice guy. Um, and, uh, the, I was, I was probably nervous and like I tend to do, I talk a mile a minute when I'm nervous. So, um, I don't know probably all the stuff I said to lay in that job, but I think I ended up saying like, yeah, I'm in theater and I act sometimes. And, uh, I, I would really, uh, like this job because I, I would like something that I could balance with plays and everything. And usually that would be a turnoff to most employers. Like, oh, this guy, he's probably got practice and all this other stuff. Like any sort of extracurricular is sometimes a turnoff. But um, for whatever reason, I got the job that day. And I said, you know, I was like very thankful. I was like, yes, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And more importantly, um, I, I want to say thanks to Jeff and let him know that, you know, I'm glad that he took a... A chance, you know, putting his name uh, in there and giving me his recommendation. And then he told me, he's like, oh, you didn't know? And I was like, what? And he goes, Jeff got in a really horrible car accident, like severe. He, he, he and his, uh, a passenger uh, that was riding with him got in a head-on collision and he's not doing too good. In fact, uh, He's going to go through all this physical therapy. He's learning how to speak and walk again. Like that happened within that week from me hanging out in the store, talking with him to me getting hired at the store. Um, so I kind of felt this humongous burden when I was going into the store. Like I had something to prove. Like I was upholding Jeff's honor because he might. Uh, he might die or he might have died like I didn't know what was what what to expect so I kind of felt like a humongous fish out of water and I was kind of living in the shadow of one of the best employees that had worked there at the time at least in my opinion so 
yeah. <laughs> it's it, not exactly the easiest thing to walk into, uh, walk into a position. In fact, it's not the it's not the last time that has happened to me where I had to walk into a position uh, where somebody had been severely injured before on the job or uh, was close to dying or had died. It's happened a couple times. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm bad luck. Anyway, um, so when I started there, uh, I was the youngest kid there. Um, I was only 15, so they really were taking a chance on me because uh, a lot of the guys were in their 20s, somewhere in their 30s. One was in his 50s, and he was an avid collector, a guy I highly respect to this day. Um, and all of them had different backgrounds to gaming. Some of them were more hardcore. Some were friends of the manager, and uh, uh, others were just kind of like seasonal employees that just uh, came in. So um, whenever you were uh, working at that GameStop during like the, the 2000s, I think it's kind of the same nowadays. Um, one of the things they... Uh, re one of the things was emphasized to get hours in the store was, of course, uh, selling the Game Informer magazine and... Uh, the magazine subscription and the card, the discount card, were tied together. And then, of course, pre-orders. So uh, that was a humongous pressure put upon new employees to kind of prove their worth. So that, when it comes to me and sales, like I've worked many retail jobs in my life. Um, when you tell me I have to sell something and that my hours depend on it, I make that a huge priority. I'm very cutthroat, almost, uh, almost vicious at uh, in, insisting on customers. Like I don't necessarily lie. Like I always tell them the truth, but very pushy, I guess, <laughs> with my sales. But it worked out for me. I I sold a ton of pre-orders. I sold a ton of that worthless Game Informer <laughs> magazine. <laughs> And uh, it kind of worked out for me because there was a, a lot of comp uh, a lot of competition, healthy competition. Uh, but then uh, it kind of led to some sad stories <laughs> along the way. So without getting into that whole spiel, that'll be its own video. Um, I guess I want to address some misconceptions uh, before I go into the more uh, specific stories. Some some misconceptions about working at a GameStop. Uh, when I was working there, uh, they had taken away the benefit to check out a game. Now, that might be a per-store basis, uh, but apparently my store wasn't doing too good at inventory or something. So, my entire time working at the GameStop, I didn't get to check out any games. So, no free rentals, and that kind of sucks. Uh, you did get a discount. You got around like 15%, I believe. Uh, so there was a discount there, but honestly, if you got their discount card, it was just as good. You maybe s saved like 50 cents more per $10 spent. So that wasn't a big deal. Um, also, uh, being able to play games all the time. Uh, back when I worked at GameStop, they still had a lot of demo kiosks. They had like little TVs set up and you could play the GameCube, the PS2. And you could try out games, uh, but they've since kind of moved away from that almost entirely. I don't think I've ever seen in the past 10 years a uh, GameStop employee come out and <laughs> open up a kiosk and pop in a game so somebody could try it. So... Uh, maybe that's better for the business, but I kind of miss that. Like the old Funko Land, they had like an NES, a Sega Genesis, a Super Nintendo, a PlayStation, and uh, they had them all locked behind this uh, glass case. And then you just said, hey, I want to try out that Resident Evil game. And they, an employee would go back and get that for you. So um, I didn't get to try out many of the games. I did test them. I guess that did count as that. Um, also... The hours were really bad. <laughs> um, I I got paid minimum wage, and minimum wage back in 2005 was like around five dollars and fifty cents. So I wasn't making much, and the hours were very dependent on your pre-order and in uh, uh, subscription to the magazine. I think that's still very much true. Um, if you go into a GameStop, I think this is kind of true to the today. There's a humongous turnover 
uh, when it comes to employees. There's always, they, they call it the open door policy because um, I guess it's a very sought after or desired job, especially if you're younger. Uh, so uh, they would hold things over your head quite a bit. So if you weren't on your A game, if you weren't getting subs or pre-orders, or if you messed up on a little thing, like they would say, you know, it, we could just fire you at any moment. We could do clean the house, fire the whole team, and get uh, new people. And sadly, as I'll go into some of my stories, that was the case. Uh, I had multiple managers, almost four or five managers, if I believe. Yeah, around five managers in the span of two years. Yeah. Um, and another thing, uh, the biggest misconception is that the job uh, was fun. It's not. It's not a fun job. It's just like any other retail job. But um, it has its own share of nuances. I mean, it had its moments at times. Like sometimes you got free swag like this silk DS shirt. But uh, other than that, it wasn't exactly the funnest job around. So, um, yeah. That's just kind of the overview of this series. Uh, any sort of questions you have about working in the game store, I can try and answer them. Uh, but I'm going to just kind of focus on, I guess, I, I remember things like when you remember things about your life, you remember them based on like when movies came out or when games came out. And I feel that's kind of the best way for me to structure it. So like, oh, this is what happened during the Halo 2 launch or this is what happened uh, during Grand Theft Auto San Andreas's launch or, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, there were a couple of uh, midnight launches that I got to be a part of, and those were actually kind of fun. Uh, but I feel like gaming stores in general are a thing of the past. Like, GameStop itself, it's on its way out. Um, I guess it really depends on what the next generation of consoles do, if they do do that digital push. Um, and I, you can see it yourself. You walk into a GameStop, they're selling tablets, they're selling phones. Um, there's like last gen games or games, like even retro games, they only sell them online. Um, and the games that are out in the store, they're not necessarily the best. They're not, they're not like niche, niche games like that you can get on NIS his store or limited run games. There's like not, you can't pre-order the cool shit like you could back in the day. Anyway, I'll probably cut that bit out. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is my, this is my GameStop series. This is my, uh, welcome to GameStop. Would you like to pre-order Madden 2005 today? <laughs> anyway, um... I have a lot of crazy fun stories to share. I have some sad stories, happy stories, like good gaming stories, like how I how I encountered some crazy games that I have in my collection nowadays, how I got free stuff, um, how I got fired. Ooh, yeah, that's in there. And uh, uh, I'd like to reach out to some of my friends that I worked with. I'm still friends with some of my coworkers from that place. Oh, so many years ago, and uh, I'm sure they have some unique stories of their own. So if I could maybe get them on a Skype chat or maybe just talk to them and kind of recall some things that I'm forgetting, it would be great. So, yeah, I hope you look forward to the series. Um, if you think this is stupid, <laughs> you can go ahead and tell me that. But uh, yeah, uh, stick around. Some crazy things <laughs> are going to be revealed. I'll see you next time. This is a nice smooth shirt. I, I love the feel of it. Like the Gaijin of Dojima jacket feels like this. And I love wearing it just because I like soft textures like this. Uh, but washing this, this is like a polyester blend. So there's very specific instructions on how to wash this. I will probably never wash this. In fact, I pulled it out of a plastic bag that I've had forever. Um, yeah. I'll see you next time.